Sam, tell me what's going on right now. Uh, you've obviously been involved in kind of a, well, let's just say a little bit of an out there project. It, uh, yeah. But uh, what's the status right now? Well, we're building, uh, just wrapping up the main wing uh, on their flying prototype for pre-production purposes. We'll be in production next year. And so moving on to the body and parallel with that, the tail. So hoping to wrap that up shortly. Love to get in the air really quick. For those of us uh, out there in the crazy world that have been hiding in caves, explain the project. Not just what it is, but the parameters and what you hope to accomplish. Certainly. The project is a... We call it a multi-mode vehicle because we're three wheels, we're not a car, so you couldn't call it really a flying car, but multi-modes, it drives and flies. And according to our tests so far and prototyping, it actually drives very, very well. And wind tunnel shows that it should fly very well. So we're hoping to have that combination, not the other, where it's mediocre car, mediocre plane. But where we started off with this and why we did this in the first place, if you look at the future of transportation, it's obvious that it's not going to be on the ground. There's too many people concentrated in too little space in the big cities for that to really go forward. So right now, the best that we can see you can do under the current regs and everything is a point to point that is drive to the closest airport, fly to the airport closest to where you want to be, and then drive that last little few miles. Capability wise, what are you targeting? Well, we'd like a, about 160 mile an hour cruise. We go in miles per hour because we're on the ground. so miles per hour is, makes more sense to stick with that. On the ground we've already tested over 100 miles an hour which is nice. It's very fun to drive. It's got the power to weight almost of a Ferrari California so you kind of have to be a little reserved on the ground. As a motorcycle you don't have to have crash protection, safety belts, any of that nature of course. We decided people are going to be fully enclosed, they're going to think like they're in a car. You better include it because they're going to drive like they're that safe. So we put uh, crash bars for the doors for side impacts, front and rear crumple zones, uh, safety and harness of course, and rollover protection so that you you are protected. So on the gr on the ground you're safe and uh, and capable of having some fun. And in the air, the 200 mile an hour VNE is what we're targeting for. We will get as close as we can to that, and test flights will tell us what we do. Describe what a test program is going to be like for something like this. Well. Uh, Fortunately, we have a really great test pilot, uh, military background test pilot, but he was pretty certain that he could ride a test card that would run us through the flight procedures that would give us the, the outsides of the envelope, and then we can fill in the inside as we move along. But he didn't seem to be thinking it was too much trouble. It flies and has the controls of any other aircraft. It's not really that much different. It's just how it gets there. The wings swing out from the belly, and tail moves backwards and then locks in place. And then, really, you just have a regular old airplane. It's ducted fan, which is also a bit unusual. Look into the future. Get your crystal ball out and explain to me where, when, and how a vehicle like this can be introduced to the public and what it will do. The success of a program like ours is going to lead into a new direction for transportation as a whole. A lot of people say, well, what can you do? You're a niche market. You have to have a pilot license to fly this. Your base is going to be limited. How are you going to make an effect on the world at large? You know, why do this? But if you look at the Department of Transportation studies, every one of them that analyzes traffic in and out of major cities will tell you that if you take just a small amount of the traffic off peak traffic loads, the rest of the traffic in that freeway system doubles or more than doubles in speed. So their commute just got cut down because of a change of three to five percent. So even a, a guy like myself with a niche market startup can make a huge difference, not, for, not only for our guys, but for the rest of the traffic and the rest of the system. So it's definitely worth uh, pushing forward and it's worth supporting. And it's one of those things that can change even in its infancy. In all probabilities, when will we see these as a commercial reality? What's it really gonna cost? Mm. And ultimately, from the regulatory standpoint, what compromises are people going to have to make to be able to operate it? So we're looking to establish production next year. It's a kit aircraft. So we're doing it as an assembly line on our builder assist, like the big guys do with quality control points. And we assume that it'll take about three weeks to do that builder assist program. And that's six days a week, you know, eight hours a day roughly. Kit cost, you know, it's really hard to predict at this point. We're still making and fabricating parts. So anything we have is a guess. But earlier on, we guessed about 130000 for the package including engine avionics and builders this program built in that's including five hours of crossover training because it is a different it flies a little differently than 
on landing and takeoff than other aircraft because of the wheel location. So we want to make sure that people cross over and do well at that. It, since it's three wheels and classes a motorcycle, in most states you need a motorcycle license on your driver's license. You do need a private pilot license to fly it. It is experimental class, so private pilot's license required. You can learn in it. We have dual control setups. Because they're selling internationally, so you can choose left-hand drive and fly, right-hand drive and fly, or dual. The worst things so far that we found is insurance. <laughs> There's a nut to crack, right? We talked to the AIG and others, and they still haven't written a flying car insurance program. But they'll write you a car or a motorcycle in our case, and also an aircraft, and you'll pay for both of those. They just have language in there that says, okay, when this happens, it's a motorcycle, and when it's not happened, it's an airplane, just because there's two policies, they have to have a dividing line. How can people find out more about this project and keep an eye on progress for the future? Well, sure, the website is the easiest, uh, www.samsonsky.com, S-E-M-S-O-N. Thanks so much for your time and for joining us on Aero TV. Thank you very much, yeah. Aero TV is brought to you by... Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. We are the Aero News Network with over 250,000 stories, 7,000 Aero podcasts, 2,500 Aero TV programs, 500 episodes of Airborne and so much more. It's a record of performance unequaled in the Aeroverse, and there's far more to come. Aero News, committed to innovate, inform, inspire, and disrupt the aviation world.